So I say, every faith leader, every faith participant, whatever the faith, ought to take it on and be self-critical. Realizing that if there is a blessing that's been conferred upon you from your faith, from your spiritual practice, whatever it is, isn't, an, isn't it incumbent on you to convey that blessing and pass it on in the clearest way possible, to enter in yourself, to, to take in the blessing fully, and then to fully and transparently bring it to others. If you've never received that blessing, somebody might be critical of you for not passing it on, but how would you pass it on if you hadn't received it? Maybe we ought to think before we receive the blessing of something like that. Because in receiving it, are we not receiving the imperative to share it? And then if we don't share it, what's up with us? What's up with us? So there's the entering of the kingdom of heaven, which was Jesus's way of talking about spirituality. And we know that when we enter it, it enters us. There's oneness. And then there's an invitation to others to, to enter in and to allow it to enter them, that we pass on. But only in transparency. That doesn't work very well as a dogma. We don't enter the kingdom of heaven through dogma. We enter it through actual experience. That's what a teaching, a spiritual teaching, is meant to do. It's meant to communicate experience. It takes courage. It takes strength and action to pass on. Well, first of all, to know the experience for oneself and then to pass it on. You have to do something. You have to take the action to do it. Have you noticed this in your life about taking action? That when you don't do something, that every part of you knows you should be doing, that everything gets blocked up in your, your experience. All your energy, your thinking, your emotions. There's an urge within you to act. That's the simplest thing in the world, right? It's to do what life would have you do. It's to follow the urge of the creator within you and do the deed, whatever the deed is, large or small. And somehow we can get ourselves into this position as human beings where we feel the urge, but we don't do it. And so we, we dam up the urge and then what happens? Well, we have to make excuses as to why we didn't do it. We have to project on other people. Well, we didn't do it because of this person over there. We have to try to figure out our world is going wacky. So because we didn't do the deed, now our world is going wacky. And then we start philosophizing on why the world went wacky. All of this dysfunction is created by the simple, simple failure to act, the simple failure to do the deed, to enter the kingdom of heaven and let it enter you. And then bring it into your world in the act that would bring it. To say the word, to do the deed, to express the feeling.
I do wonder, have you had the experience of finally doing the thing that you were being called to do? And it's like, wow, this just all got simple. And spirituality is simple. It gets complicated when we don't do the deed. And we're trying to figure out, why is all this happening? Because you didn't do the deed. When you do the deed, you're left with the simplicity of life. You have a free conscience, too. How about that? Right? It's not hanging over you. You know, you, know you should have done it. You didn't do it. But I had a reason not to do it. And it just goes on. It doesn't stop. And there, the conscious thoughts about it. But then there, there's the impact on the psyche. How does it impact a human psyche when a person doesn't do what they are called to do? But everything in them is calling them to do the thing and they don't do it. And it all goes wrong. That's true with every person on the face of the planet. It's true with every spiritual path on the face of the planet. <laughs> 